So this show is on extraterrestrial life, but your life's work actually searched um, for extraterrestrial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Can you differentiate the two, firstly? And then secondly, why search for extraterrestrial intelligence? Well, um, the difference between searching for life, looking for biosignatures, and searching for intelligence, which is actually looking for technosignatures, evidence of technology, is that uh, we don't know how to find intelligence directly. So we use technology as a proxy. With respect to looking for life, looking for biosignatures, we use ourselves and life as we know it as the proxy, recognizing that life out there may be something else. But we can look to see how life on this planet modifies, particularly the atmosphere of the planet, in ways that you could perhaps detect at interstellar distances. So looking for disequilibrium chemistry in the atmospheres, the, the presence of two very reactive molecules, such as oxygen and methane um, in the lab, you put those together and you get carbon dioxide and water, and that's happening in our atmosphere all the time. But because we've got biology on the surface, we've got plants producing oxygen, and we've got uh, bovine flatulence, cow fart, <laughs> producing methane. Um, our, our atmosphere is noticeably out of equilibrium. And we're hoping to be able to detect such things in the atmospheres of at least nearby exoplanets, maybe they've developed a technology and maybe they've modified their environment in ways that we could detect. So um, looking for biosignatures, looking for technosignatures, they all fit under the umbrella of a discipline called astrobiology. And either one would be pretty phenomenal to find, but I have a bias for those that can talk back. Um, you spent a career at this institution, this Paragon institution called SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Tell us a little bit about how that actually began. What's the origins of SETI? The origins of SETI as a discipline had uh, its start in 1959 when Giuseppe Cocconi and Philip Morrison published a paper in Nature suggesting that these new tools that we had, thanks to World War II conversion of radars to radio telescopes, a new way to look at the universe and that perhaps um, this technology would allow us to find someone else out there who also had radio telescopes and could broadcast. In 1984, I co-founded the SETI Institute as a way of saving NASA money. When I wrote the charter, I didn't only talk about searching for extraterrestrial intelligence, I talked about being a research support home for scientists interested in studying any aspect of the question of life beyond Earth. And so today, we have over 100 PhD scientists working at the SETI Institute, studying um, issues about the origin of life, uh, life on Mars perhaps, just a whole panoply of different types of science. Sure, well look, th thank you for your pioneering spirit you did mention it started with radio telescopes. M most people, when they hear telescopes, they, they think of the optical telescopes going back to Galileo to today. You look through something with your eyes and see pretty stuff outside there. Um, can you just describe a little bit more um, about that versus how a radio telescope actually works to detect signals? So radio waves are kind of just like long, tired light waves. And so we build a telescope that has a collecting area right, like an optical telescope, uh, and that focuses the radio waves from the sky to a point, and at that point, we put a receiver that measures the voltages that are actually being captured from the sky. Using computers, we can turn those voltages as a function of time into two-dimensional images of what you would see on the sky if your eyes received radio waves rather than optical waves. And we can also take the incoming radio waves and look for excesses at a particular frequency. Maybe think of it as a particular channel on the radio dial. 
and nature spreads the energy that it emits over many, many channels. But technology um, can produce a signal that shows up at only one frequency, one radio channel. So that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. We look for very, very short pulses uh, that we don't think nature can manufacture. So, so related to that, um, you know, artificial intelligence is kind of dominating us now. It's a really useful tool to be sure. Um, as you search for extraterrestrial life um, and intelligent life, talk to us about kind of the tools you use and are, are we really generating tools that might be looking at a sliver in the expansive universe and, and we may be missing it by infinite number of light years or we may be casting just a great net and it's just a matter of time. So I'm excited about artificial intelligence and machine learning because there may be other types of signals out there um, that we are totally missing. I think that will be so much less biased than what we're capable of doing now and may allow us to find types of signals that, we're all, that we've already seen but have totally missed with the algorithms that we've been, the biases that we've been um, imposing on our data until now. <laughs> we always reserve the right to get smarter in this business. If SETI were to find concrete evidence, concrete evidence of intelligent life elsewhere in the universe, what do we do with that? We've thought about this a lot, and certainly when we used to be a NASA project, we had to think about it and write what we call post-detection protocols. Hmm. And as a NASA project, it even got as um, fine-grained as which associate administrator was going to inform the president, right? Um, not an NASA project anymore. We don't have to do that one. But we have tried to plan for um, how we convince ourselves that what we think we found is actually what we found. So it involves trying to get an independent confirmation from another telescope somewhere else with equipment that we didn't build and software that we didn't write. And that's, we're always trying to, to fortify ourselves against a deliberate hoax. Okay. So independent verification is important. Uh, once you get there though, you really wanna tell the world because if there's a signal it's coming to Earth. It isn't coming to the SETI Institute or California, right? So that information is actually the property of all humankind. And so the world deserves to know. 